Yo, crypto nation and mining family. Crip crypto nation and mining family. What's going on? And of course, like always, it's not financial advice. Yo. Yo, Crypto Nation and mining family, what's going on? So, got a couple of interesting tidbits. Without any further ado, let's dig in. Yo, so, uh, this isn't a block stream shill of any sort. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, shape, or form. Um, I just think this is actually kind of interesting. Um, <clears throat> I've kept an eye on block stream for, for quite some time now. Uh, they are leading uh, some of the leading uh, research in a lightning network technology for sidechain um, instant transaction style payments. Uh, so they've also got the Blockstream Explorer and they did also put a Blockstream satellite into space. Uh, which that's always pretty cool in my eyes. So there's always going to be a way for all networks to always be able to communicate with each other. Baller! I hope they start putting more of those up with uh, blockchain integration into the satellite. Um, this way you've got a full grid system. Even if the internet goes down, Bitcoin will live out. Ooh, that'll be the day, right? Um, but... This is their Blockstream green wallet. Um, so it's made for like Android, Apple, uh, like Linux phones and stuff like that. So you'll be able to actually plug in your Nano and actually have a um, Blockstream green wallet secured on there. Um, what I find is pretty interesting, not just that you can plug in your wallet into there, but it's like a 2FA system, so um, it's, it's making a multi-sig wallet. And what, that, what a multi-sig wallet really is, is that half of your private key is stored on their side, half of your private key is stored on your side. So it's in essence, it's a cold wallet. Um, so knowing that you know blockstream is in it for the long term um they they're innovators into the space so i see don't see you know it's like i don't really see ledger ledger uh, going out of business or treasure either um i think they're in it for the long haul for the most part too but I would also like to see, and it's always been, you'll, you'll hear me say this from time to time, uh, my concern using, because I have a Ledger too. I got the Ledger out in the NOS. Um, I got a few bucks on there. I mean, not a whole lot. And I treat that like I do uh, my wallet that I carry in my back pocket. You know, I'm willing to put a few bucks in there to do what I need to do for the day. Now, going beyond that and storing massive wealth onto it, I'm not very comfortable with that for one reason. That if for any case, any instance that their network gets shut down for whatever reason, I don't care what it is, um, is getting the wallet, uh, your Bitcoin off of the wallet. Um, so I guess there are a few wallets out there that will allow you to integrate your wallet on there, um, but it does not look like uh, Blockstream Green Wallet will be one of those uh, while looking into it. Um, so I will get into that in just one second here. Um, so when you're sitting there and you're setting up a wallet, you're setting it up for the first time, okay, with with uh, Blockstream Green, okay. So that's where uh, I know my man, my buddy Mikel. He was sitting there going, well, you should be able to get your Bitcoin off of there. Mm. So I started digging around on that. I'm like, I want to see this, right? So as you see, it supports that lovely busy Bitcoin. So it looks like it should support it as long as it's only Bitcoin. Any other thing that you had on there, if you have an issue, you will it will be just basically lost from this 
from them at least. They're not gonna worry about anything else. So you'll, it looks like you should be able to see it, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to access it. That would be my question. Considering that you're setting up a new wallet. Um, and I know when you go into Liquid Bitcoin and the other at Liquid assets that they have on Blockstream Network, that goes into the Lightning Network. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if I can if I'd be able to hook up my wallet to it and see the couple of Bitcoin, you know, the, the couple of bucks in Bitcoin that I actually have. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that'd be an interesting one because of the fact that it's a, a multi-sig wallet. Um, it's like uh, when you create, you know, it's like it's talking about, you know, being able to pull back, you know, get your a new wallet and you be able to hook it up with the ledger because everything is set up to accept that that side of it um, so yeah I mean it's it's not really looking like I should be able to access it um, because it's asking to open up a new wallet um, trying to find where where it looked like it was set like that <laughs> and it's connecting it. That's connecting it. Yeah, so I mean, they don't even say that it actually, even in their own stuff, that you can access nano side. So it looks like it's acting like, um, like I know uh, Neo works with the. Uh, the nano so you can sit there and you're using that the the sign the the, the hold your keys otherwise the wallet's empty um, and you can't access neo on their side it's only on uh, neo side that you can access it so it's stored with them separate from nano you're using your nano to kind of just go knock knock yes it's me i can verify see um and that's about as far as they go um so with that being said um i would love to s either test it out myself um or if one of you guys i've already used uh, the Blockstream Green Wallet, and you've hooked it up with your Nano uh, Ledger S, if it communicates with Nano side of your Bitcoin wallet, uh, let me know in the comments down below if it does. Just like a yes or a no on there. Uh, be very curious. Uh, Want to know what else is kind of curious? Dude, last Friday, they mined, Bitcoin got mined uh, 16 blocks. 16 blocks in one hour Just bam bang that bad boy out um and four of the blocks were reported within 40 seconds at, at 46 seconds so you're talking within like a little over 10 seconds a block for for almost 50 seconds just a little over 10 seconds a block um that i mean uh yeah that's insane uh, but what they did notice um, is that the mempool size also spiked up with the amount of transactions sitting waiting, just waiting, waiting for Bitcoin miners to gobble up them gains, right? Um, so I'm wondering that with, you know, and it was only for like a one hour period. So God knows if it, if the, hash rate drop for just like a brief moment just long enough you know maybe a, a mining facility turned off for a moment turned back on like they were power cycling the building making it a quick upgrade so they had to turn everything off and then turn everything back on and it took a second and they were able to mine a lot more in a smaller amount of time because it was one of the top mining facilities but you would think that somewhere on the hash rate chart, you would have seen a significant just plummet. Um, you see these plummets all the time. You didn't see 
that much of a difference from this plummet back here. Um, or, it, yeah, no, it actually it was this plummet. So, I mean, you see, okay, this is the one I was looking for. So back here, you don't see that hard plummet. It didn't do all of that. It did it back up over here. Um, so to see it do that drop it that hard like that, um, it, I think it's at a combination of you know a little bit of a hash rate drop and the amount of mempool. Like like they say, ten minutes is the average. Um, doesn't mean that it is the standard. Um, you will see hiccups like this here and there. Um, as long as we're not um, hitting blocks at the same time and creating little forks here and there, it does actually happen from time to time. Um, we try not to have that happen too often. Uh, block reorgs are a little time consuming um, and kind of hurts the network a little bit if it has to be done. Um, <clears throat> but it's just weird, you don't really see anything to really write home about for blockchain. I mean, it's just been nice and steady. We've seen some pretty big drop-offs here and there. Um, even if you go back to where we were in the middle of the mining bear market, um, nowhere in this point did we pick up on there. Um, so it was weird. I think it was more of a glitch um, that it just banged out a couple extra blocks so some people got their payments to go through a little faster. Um, which shows that Bitcoin should have the capability to scale. Ooh. If needed. Ooh. Um, and then, talking about scaling. Guys. Are you mining Ethereum at all? Or Ethereum Classic? In any way, shape, or form? Um, I know a lot of people are because it is one of the more profitable coins out there to mine with a GPU right now. So, that kind of makes me ask the next follow-up question. If you're mining Ethereum, let me know in the comments down below. Are you mining it with an NVIDIA or an AMD? Mm -hmm. and, and it kind of like uh, leads me to the my, my next whole segue to everything, okay? I have mined Ethereum Classic for a long time. I had a bunch of E3 ant miners for mining Ethereum Classic. Uh, I am a big supporter of them um, and what they do, standing behind their code and the um, that code is law, you know. So to me, they it, they've got more integrity than Ethereum side, but that's. A whole different discussion. Um, so, if you're mining on AMD, you're going to notice nothing. Um, if you were mining AMD a while back, you were I, there was a point where even AMD people were complaining about mining Ethereum. Um, <clears throat> it was the drivers um, did not work after a certain point for maximum hash. People were losing anywhere from one to four mega hash per GPU um, on a, with an AMD card um, until they finally had a driver patch that uh, changed up memory allocation on there and made it work a lot, lot, lot better. Um, <clears throat> and even coming into it now, They've made a few more improvements on Ethereum with the AMD cards on Ethereum where now I can sit there and really pull power back up off of them and a lot. I can get them under 100 watt. My RX 580s under 100 watts per card um, while maintaining about, you know, a 31 mega hash to 31 and a half mega hash per cards at around 90 watts, uh, which that's amazing um, but when it comes down to nvidia as of lately one thing i noticed is that i put it on there running my normal uh, uh my normal overclock with my normal wattage let's dig in to sit, sit there and see some of this so this is uh simple mining os 
and I've got, you can see on there, nine GPUs. Oh man, allergies. Ooh. It's been like raining and like anytime right after the rain, uh, mold and stuff like that, mold and spores and all that good stuff, man, my nose gets so itchy. Um, it's, it's not the human malware virus, it's, it's allergies. Um, <clears throat> so, as you see, it's mostly 1080, uh, 1070 Ti's on here. Um, and if you really take a look on here, you'll see my, my hash rate for each card. This is what I had to do in order to get the hash rate up. Now, I used to be able to run these at 100 watts. Used to. And I had to turn up the wattage on these bad boys in order to get the hash rate up to where they're supposed to be. And you can see that there are a few cards, of course, they're the non-TIs, so they don't have the optimized memory on here, that are now hashing way, way low. And it's not like they're overheating or anything like that, and I don't want to put any more power to these things. They're, it's not worth it. If, if I've got to sit there and drop this thing to 120 watts, in order to get the hash rate to where it's supposed to be. I used to have them all at uh, negative 50 on the core and 1100 on the mem with 100 watts. And they would all consistently hit right around 31 mega hash. Now I've had to up the, the, the wattage on here in order to get my hash rate back. Um, so it looks like either the miners have to do something different with the NVIDIAs to work right on this on these algorithms now um, Or there needs to be a driver support release uh, because I mean I, I get it that the uh, The DAG size is getting pretty big which is going to start bottlenecking a little bit on the on the memory They've got to make it to where it basically utilizes the RAM the right way um, So if they're trying to run the VRAM too fast this might be the reason that it's suffering. Um, I've had a, had a, the overclocks all over the place. As soon as I start bringing the memory back on it, you watch the hash rate drop right back with it. So it's not worth sitting there and dropping the, the clock speed on it. Uh, so this is a, a, a bigger, a larger issue. And I've noticed it even on my other rigs too, as you can see here. Uh, you know, an EVGA, 1070, non-TI, negative 50, 1100, and, and I've got to put it to 115 watts. This is me kind of playing around with it to see um, if I can get all my hash rate back. How, at what point in time would I get my hash rate back? And I have sat there and dropped these things to 125 watts. was not worth it. Not worth it at all. Um, so, and I can sit here and go over to my other rig here, and I used to be able to get into the f like 52, 53 mega hash at the same wattage. So even on these cards, I am down hash rate, big time. Um, and it seems like it's affected across all of them. I mean, I was closer to that 50 mega hash with all of these. so. I don't know if it's hash rate um, that they're not able to, 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 I've always had issues with this particular rig. It looks like they don't like my uh, 1070, I mean my 1080s on here and my uh, 1660 Ti. Uh, this rig has just been a pain in my butt since I switched it over to here um, off of Hive OS, but whenever I was mining these rigs on Hive OS, these, these, these rates were more closer to the 50 mega hash, um, which at the, at this wattage was a beautiful. So, I mean, I'm not sitting here and dropping my, uh, my clock, my, uh, overclocks any different than I had on there. So definitely something funny is going on here. Uh, because like, yeah, you've got to add tons of power. Tons, tons, tons of power. Not worth it, guys. Just not. And you can see here, th even through here, I am actually am commanding more power to go to these. And it's still staying low. Um, I believe you can... S 
and even like uh, some of these will stay a little bit lower than the others because they're not doing as much work um, at least with temperature wise temps on this card and this is not in front of the window this is off to the side not these cards here are in front of the window and they've got higher hash rate and they are also warmer so you can tell by temperature wise that these cards are doing more work than these top these top cards except for this one but this one's kind of has really bad airflow here but even so with bad airflow the temp's still down and the hash rate is way way down and 52c is not enough to start dragging down the hash rate from thermal throttling so that is not the issue guys um, so if you guys have noticed the same issue let me know what you've noticed on your side um, what kind of graphics card you're you're utilizing and how much hash rate you have lost with that card now on ethereum or ethereum classic let me know in the comments down below guys and while you guys are down there definitely smash that lizzie like button hit the subscribe and hit the bell little bell notification button down there uh, it, it helps when you, to know that whenever I'm dropping these great videos. Um, with that, guys, definitely see you all on the next one. Peace.